And the migrant crisis that Rishi Sunak has pledged to control seems to be worsening by the week, with almost a thousand legal migrants arriving on small boats since just last Tuesday. The ongoing influx has led to Home Office officials being offered to find accommodation for a staggering 25,000 migrants from a list of disused Crown properties. The list, which was obtained by the Times newspaper, includes around 120 Ministry of Defence sites and stretches right across the UK. Meanwhile, bombshell figures have revealed that just 215 of more than 45,000 migrants who crossed the English Channel last year were removed from the country. That means that just 0.47% of passengers on small boats in 2022 were actually deported. And I'm sorry to tell you it gets even worse, as an Albanian gangster convicted of murder in his home country has been granted legal anonymity after claiming asylum in the UK to protect him from his gangland rivals. So, Lawrence, with the migrant crisis threatening to spiral out of control now, uh, do you think we need to declare this a national emergency? I think it's, it's sort of very sad, Dan, because um, Britain is a very warm, welcoming and tolerant country, and we, we a genuine refugee is welcomed. You know, they really are. But but this, you know, our friends on the woke left tried to tell us that, um, you know, they talk a lot about colonialization and how and how colonialism was really bad. But essentially what we're getting is we're being colonized. I, mean, I hate to say it, you know, because one gets called a racist for doing so. But these people are coming. They're not refugees. They're economic migrants and we can't get rid of them. So we need to leave the European Court of Human Rights and Bre Brexit should have very much given us control of our borders. You cannot have a welfare state and an open border. It just doesn't work. And, you know, if you want to call me racist for saying it, then fine. No, I think we have to leave the ECHR. I mean, I've been saying we have to leave the ECHR for months or years, actually. And obviously, we have a Home Secretary who also knows we have to leave the ECHR. That's the frustrating thing. Unfortunately, the Prime Minister, who's quite a globalist bloke, just isn't there yet. Well, he's unelected, isn't he? But I think what's really encouraging is, uh, is the fact that, you know, maybe it took some brown people, your Suella Bravemans and your Rishi Sunaks, to go, we need to tackle this in, in, influx of... Of, of migrants. These people are not fleeing um, war-torn lands. So therefore, their very argument would depend on the fact that they are going, well, I'm going to colonise you. You've got a nicer country. We want to come you, to you. You, you colonised us. We're going to colonise you. And, you know, but we, we, on, the, on our side of the argument, we're shut down from having this discussion of going, this is a replacement. You know, the, the, these aren't women and children arriving on these boats. These are working age, military age men who arrive in this country, as we've seen tonight, some shattering footage of a uh, northern Uber driver. I mean, I want to know what Uber, what their terms of service are in terms of, of this young woman being molested in a car. And unless we turn around and we go, look, we value our nationhood. We think our nation is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And we welcome everybody. But at the same time, you have to you have to be part of what this project is, which is Britain, which is tolerance, which is freedom of speech, which is equality under the law. We're in real trouble. You know, we're in real trouble and we can't throw them out. We're in even more trouble, especially the crooks. Mm -hmm.